This is Dror Moshe Kasuto. Thanks for watching. Be'ezrat Hashem. We are going to try to understand tonight a few more things about the nature of, uh, of our creation to see how, um, how deep we can reach into the secrets of creation. The Creator Himself, He treasured inside this world an inner path for every individual to reach the world of beyond. And it's in our power, based on the effort, and the sincerity, the honesty, the truth of our intention to reach the highest levels and really to climb above all the limitations of the physical world. It is a challenge though, because in every generation and in every situation in the life of a person, there are new coverings, new tests, new challenges that are blocking the eyesight, blocking those gates of purity, of holiness. The first time that we heard in human history about a person that was able to remove the curtains of physicality was in the lifetime of Chanoch. Chanoch, it's written on him that he was the man of God, Chanoch Ish HaElohim, and he was serving Hashem, committed himself to the Creator with all his heart, dedicated his life completely to the Creator, and in the end of his days on earth, he went up in a similar way to the way that been described of Elijah the prophet, that he went up to the sky while he was still alive on a flaming chariot with flaming horses. On Elijah it's written that there were few horses and with Hanoch there was one horse that he was riding on and they took him back to heaven with his physical body. Something that for people like us it's or that it sounds like a legend, something from stories of people from the past, we don't know how to interpret it. Or that if we allow ourselves to really become believers, to throw our wisdoms and to try to connect ourselves to the spiritual aspect of life. We might even believe that it can take place in our own lives as well. Now, after Pesach, we were sitting and dining and enjoying the amazing Seder in the Lela Seder, in the night of the Seder. And we're reading about the amazing miracles that the Creator made to His people, to us, we believe. And He opened the sea for us and all the plagues on the heads of our enemies and took us out in a miraculous way and wonders took place in our lives. And for 40 years He was feeding us in the desert and all those things, food came down of heaven through the, through like from the sky, just to our hands, to our doorsteps, like amazing things. Water came out of the stone from boulders, a well was walking with us, clouds were protecting us. Now. All those amazing stories, they're amazing as legends, it's amazing as, as stories of people like talking and passing the message from one generation to the next, but do we really believe that those things really took place? Because if we do, if we're going to risk ourselves to say, yes, I do, I believe, so okay, the mission is now to bring it down to our lifetime as well. 
just to believe that it happened in the past, in the life of our ancestors, that's not enough. Because it's to say that the Creator, He was there with them, for them, He loved them, He made miracles and wonders for them, but us, we're not worthy. We're not as pure, we're not as good, and by that you're twisting something very basic, very important in the foundation of faith. That you think that the Creator was with them because of their purity. But the truth is that He was with them because of His unconditional love to His creations. And for that we need to believe that He can be for us as well in a similar way. And for that we're waiting and hoping and expecting for the redemption to take place in our days, in our lives. And the redemption is a wonder above nature. We're waiting for the nature to change his way, his way, and for miracles to take place in our lives. That all those wonders that have been described in Egypt when we went out of Egypt will be forgotten based on the miracles that will take place in our days, for that we're waiting. Those are the promises that have been given to the ancestors and to the prophets and to all of our people in many generations, that He was the one to redeem and He will be the one to redeem us in the future. So we're waiting for that salvation. We need to believe that it can take place in our lives. Even if we cannot find someone that is worthy, also in the generation of Am Yisrael in Egypt, they couldn't find no one worthy. You know who was worthy? That one that ran away 60 years ago. They didn't know that he is about to come back, Moses. No one knew about Moses. Moses ran away 60 years ago. Am Yisrael were lost in Egypt, suffering, working like crazy, being killed, being destroyed, being humiliated being raped, being abused, being robbed, being killed in any possible way over there in Egypt. And yes, there is a story about that person that ran away 60 years ago and who knows where is he. No one knew about him. He was lost in the desert for 60 years for Am Israel. Also today we feel so lost and there's no one to lead the camp. Okay, that's what we feel. We feel that. But you don't know. Maybe there is someone over there behind that wall and he's our Redeemer. Maybe there is someone that for 60 years, for 7, I don't know how many years, he's crying with his tearing eyes and he's breaking the, the, the gates of iron and, and he makes the path for that salvation to work, to take place in our lives. So we, as those lost ones, as those ones that need the salvation, we need to check ourselves, do, do we believe that those wonders can take place in our lives? Now, I want to read for you something small, a tiny thing, not so important even, just like something nice. It's written that when Hanoch, that man of God that we heard about, Hanoch, he was in the first few generations, he was from those people that lived 365 years, and he said that the Creator, he has 70 unique names. The Creator has much more than 70, but on those 70 unique ones, that has certain quality in them, he said that those ones can be used. And the rest of them, there is no number to them. There are 70 names that you can use of the Creator. It doesn't mean that we can say them, and I don't know them. But he found a certain definition to a certain group of names and said, you can use those 70 names, and the rest there is no number to the names of the Creator. And those 70 names of the Creator, they are coming out in few crowns of fire, in few crowns of flames, in few crowns of lightnings, in few crowns of electric, 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 electric crowns, in few crowns of of thunders from in front of the throne of honor and with them 1,000 camps of 
ושכינה הקדושה, how you say שכינה? שכינה. שכינה, זה, there is no like English name? No, no. 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 Okay. You, know, you know, today something interesting happened to me. A person asked me a question on WhatsApp. He asked me uh, like a certain interpretation, explanation, translation for, for a verse in Isaiah, in Ishaya 14. And he's quoting in English. Like he sends me the English quote. And over there in English it's written one of the, like what like a name of 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 the devil um, Lucifer they call him and like I read it and it's written Ishaya like and I know the name Lucifer doesn't written in Ishaya like it's a joke like there's nothing no recollection to the name Lucifer in Ishaya like no one is talking about Lucifer like what what's Lucifer it's like it's a it's a Christian Imagination that someone brought into a trust translation to the Bible, to the books. Like there is no like source to that name at all. It's like it's it's a legend. That's a legend. That's a story tale. And I tell him, okay, you know what? I'll check. And I just like open the simple like the the book. Like I I read the the source and and like. It's not talking about an angel that fell from heaven and it doesn't like nothing refer to the concept that is translated like you're gonna talk to an English speaker, a Christian person that doesn't really know the source, that doesn't know how to, to go and search the source, the Hebrew handwrites and like he must base his belief on the translations that have been translated by people that or that they had like wrong intentions while translating the book or that they couldn't understand what's really written over there and they just like misinterpret the real intention of the verse all the story over there is a rebuke to the king of Babylon that was very arrogant and thought that he's able to climb above the sky and to reach the heavens and the and Ishaya the prophet told him you're gonna fall and you're gonna hit the ground and the, and, and the hell under it and you don't have the power to climb and when over there the rebuke is is saying on him that he was praising himself but he's only a creation that can die with dawn like as early as the day starts like because he's so nothing he's only a human being that person that interpreted that book that translated that book to English thought that those three names that were explaining that he was arrogant and that he will die he thought that it's a name instead of explaining the real meaning of those through <coughs> three words Hillel, Hillel Ben Shacha three words that he was praising himself but he's about to fall early in the morning because he's not able to continue his journey because he's only a human being with no future if the Creator won't extend his life instead of understanding that that's the intention of those three words the translator to English translated it as a name Hillel Ben Shachar oh nice name amazing name but it's not a name there is no recollection to a person named Hillel ben Shachar. There was no Shachar. There was no Hillel. It's not a name of a son of a father, a child of his father named Shachar. No, it's not a name. It's only an explanation, a deep explanation of Ishaya, Navi, the prophet, that the king of Babylon will fall because he's nothing. He's, he's hopeless. He's a man. But hundreds of like thousands millions of people in in hundreds of generations will believe that Lucifer the angel of light oh sorry <laughs> that fell down to the darkness whatever so like it's nonsense like and it's only because that like people don't understand like the source like the the the, the holy ancient language of, of of the Hebrews so he asked me, so what we the English speakers going to do? I told him, you say, I'll answer all your questions. Just like send me a WhatsApp and I'll answer you, no problem. <laughs> How much headaches, like. So, 1,000, th and with them, with those crowns, thousands of, of, of camps of the Shechina, the Spirit of God, and tens on tens of thousands of armies, of units, of, of heroic, uh, powerful leaders that are driving them, those are angels, 
are, dry, are controlling those camps like kings, means that they are leaders that are leading, like shepherds that are leading camps on camps of, of, of angels in fear, with sweat, in, in grace and beauty, fear from heaven, in, in huge, tremendous, uh, they're like scared and in huge respect, with honor, with strength, with wisdom, with knowledge, in a pillar of fire and pillar of flaming lightnings and their light like the lights of, 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 of lightnings and the look of electricity they give them the power, the respect, the, the, the dignity and they are calling in front of all their soldiers Kadosh, 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 Holy, Holy, Holy is the name of the Creator Shenemar and it's been said now, those are the explanations, those names, those descriptions are only descriptions to explain to us what happened when one of those 70 names is being used. The Creator, he has 70 names. Hanoch is telling us, listen, the Creator, he has 70 names. When you are about to use one of his names, that huge movement, that Thing happens in the sky. When you're about to mention the name of Hashem, when you want to say Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech Haolam Shakol Niyabit Bara, you want to say the name of God. You want to say the blessing. You want to put filin. You want to you want to light the candles. You want to say a simple blessing. You want to say Hamotzi Lechem Min Aretz. You're about to read a verse, and one of the names of the Creator is written over there. You want to say. Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Loch, Leolam Vaed. Alright, now you mentioned the name of God. You were about to mention the name of God. You were about to use one of His godly names. Listen what happens in the sky. Listen what happened. Thousands of camps of angels that are leading horses that made out of thunders with, with lightnings coming out of their eyes and they're opening the path for the respect and honor for the glory and the beauty and all those names and descriptions that like I stopped like it's going on and on and on like you have books there is a book that is called Pirkei Chalot Pirkei Chalot is a book that is talking about the, 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 the places, the Creator's floors, the Creator's heavens. There are seven heavens, seven places that righteous people can climb to those places and to visualize, to see the Creator, to see a vision, a reflection of the Creator sitting on His throne of honor in seven ways, in seven aspects. Rabbi Nechunia ben Hakana, that righteous man Nechunia ben Hakana, he was standing in Beit HaMikdash, in the Azara, in the temple, in the place that all of Israel could come and stand over there. And he was standing there and all the righteous people of his generation would sit on the ground on the floor. Yonatan ben Uziel, and Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel, and Rabbi Shimon ben Shatach, and huge people that until today were drinking their wisdom and thirst. They are the light to the generations. And they were all sitting on the ground. Rabbi Akiva was with them. And standing over there and, and, and like sitting on the ground, waiting to hear his visions, his explanations of what that he visualized, what that he can see while he's climbing from one stage to the next, from one floor to the next. And in every floor he's seeing those angels and horses of fire and explaining the names that he's using and the combinations. And it's all written, like we have those scripts, we have those handwrites. It's amazing. So now, all right. I'm going to start saying it. I want to be Mikubal. I want to do Kabbalah. I want to be like practical Kabbalah. That's not the thing. To use those names while you don't know how to use them, it's like to hold a weapon when you don't know how to use it. It's dangerous. It can kill you. It can kill your family. Like it, it's crazy. For the good cause, for a good use, you know how to. You want to protect. You want to defend. You want to go do something useful. Great. Do it. Use it. But it's also dangerous in the same time. And especially when you start talking about spiritual weapons and you want to start using holy names. First of all, the understanding of the power that has been given to us by God. 
There was one righteous man that met another 200 years ago. And that big rabbi told his friend, I have a student that knows how to say 1,000 pages of Gemara, of Talmud, by heart. He knows 100, 1,000 pages by heart with all the explanation, everything in his mind. Like, my student is so great, he's able to hold 1,000 pages in his mind. He knows it all. The other righteous man answered to him, I have a student that is able to say, Ribbono Shalolam, Father in Heaven, 1,000 times in a row. He's able to stand in front of the Creator and to tell Him, Father in Heaven, Father in Heaven, Father in Heaven, Father in Heaven. 1,000 times He's able to stand like that. That's much greater. To understand that from your position you should call Hashem. Maybe Hanoch was able to use those names. Maybe Hanoch was able to climb on a flaming horse. We're afraid of a regular horse. We don't know how to ride it. We don't know how to deal with a dog, with a puppy. Like, oh no, no, what's going on? Like, we're so scared and terrified, traumatized by every situation. Like, you can't drive. You don't know how to walk, how to tie your shoes. You're like, we, like... We went through thousands of years of exile. We're not normal. We're, we're like we're not. Oh, we're not fine. I'm not fine. All right. Like we're not 100. You know. Like we we're like we lost some parts already. Like right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and like we're trying. So okay. Now the Creator told us that the redemption will take place in the last generation. Like it's simple. In the end of the story, the redemption will take place. So it means that our spiritual level doesn't have anything to do with it. It not depends on how holy we are. We don't have a chance to become holy. It's a joke to think about it. I have a friend. He called me yesterday. You don't know what I've done. I ruined everything. I destroyed everything. I, what I, I start laughing. I told him it's a joke. Like, you don't even need to tell me. It's a joke. The fact that you think that you're able to spoil something, that you think that you can ruin something, that's a joke. It's already an evidence that the, that the Creator, <coughs> that the evil inclination like, fooled you, that you don't understand the Creator's will from you. All of our surroundings, 100% of our time is attacking our self-esteem. No matter what you do, you will feel bad with yourself. You see to learn Torah, Bible, you see to try to learn something, you feel bad with yourself. Oh, I was not doing it right. You try to pray, you hold the sitter book, oh, I don't know how to do it right. You try to be nice to people, oh, I'm not doing enough. You're chasing and blaming and criticizing yourself on the best things that you do with your life. A person like me, I'm telling you, I'm being 100% honest with you. I am spending, at, I don't know, like let's, let, I, I don't want to exaggerate, 97% of my time, and I'm not exaggerating now, I made a discount because I don't want to sin in my speech, I give it to others. I went once to the Biale Rebbe, the Admomi Biale, from Jerusalem, from Givat Shaul, he looked at me and he told me, in 360 60 degrees of your life, you're just giving all the time. You're not receiving from no direction. You're only giving. How do you survive? He asked me. You're only giving and giving. How do you survive? So I'm saying on myself, not 100%, 97% that I can testify on, I'm only giving. I'm only trying. And if you're going to ask me what's going on with my mind, I'm losing it. I'm losing it. I'm all day long chasing myself and blaming myself and I'm not doing enough and I must do more and why I'm not praying for him and why I'm not praying for her and why I'm not mm, succeeding in this and why I'm not accomplishing that and why this and why that and why I haven't been answered and probably I did that and maybe that was wrong and all day long like a crazy person no end to my doubts, to my thoughts, to my pain, to my sorrow, to my grief, to my fears, to my anxieties, to my pressure. 
all day long you start like you're running and chasing your tail and what can I do and what else can I do and who I'm going to call and what I'm going to do and what I should do and what can I do and how I'm going to do it and in which way and what's the right direction. Why are we suffering so badly? Why are we suffering? You're not able to go to the fridge to take a cup of water. Why we don't know how to manage our life. Why the most basic things like to pick a shirt and just to put it on and go to the street. Like why it became such a problem that you don't know how to put your legs, your feet into a pair of shoes and to go out. My wife is looking for shoes for seven years already. Like you're watching my videos, you know it. Like we're not lying. She can't find shoes. And we've been to thousands of shoes. We are in America. Like, you, like trust me, I took her all over the place. In more than 20 states, we've been in the shoe stores. <laughs> really? I'm not making up. I'll tell you. <laughs> we have the receipts. We're buying and returning, buying and returning in every shoe store in America. Why? Why is it like that? Because when you cannot see, it's not always because you're blind. It's because that someone turned off the light. In reality, the Creator is not opening the gates of success yet for us. That, that's why we're suffering. We cannot blame ourselves on the fact that the Creator still have not brought the redemption. We cannot blame ourselves. If I will have the power now to bring the redemption, if I will know that it's that switch, if I will know that I need not to eat forever, I'm going to stop eating. If you'll tell me how I can bring redemption now, I'm, I'm going to cut my hands for that. I don't, couldn't care less. Like, tell me that I'm going to bring healing to the whole wide world. I'm doing it now. What do I need to sell for that? What do I need to buy for that? Tell me, I'll do it. Need to run, climb the Everest. Naked, I'll do it. I don't mind. I couldn't care less. I'm for sure going to sacrifice my soul for that. I am. Without knowing in which direction to. I'm running to all directions in the same time. So, it doesn't work. What does it mean it doesn't work? It still haven't happened yet. Why it haven't happened yet? Because the Creator, that He's the one that needs to push the button, didn't do it yet. So until He will, we need to stop blaming ourselves because it's not in our hands. <laughs> you can't do it. I can't do it. If it would be in my hand, I would do it. Anything that I was once commanded, that someone recommended that advice for me, told me, go do that, I promise to you, I can swear on that, I made it all the way. People told me, rabbis told me, righteous people guided me, told me, go do this, go do that. I did it all. My wife will testify. I was not going to sleep. I stopped eating. I stopped. I, like, you can never imagine what I was doing. I did everything. I did three times, 40 days, six hours, it was a dude in a row. 40 nights, 40 days, every day I went to the fields for six hours, whole hours, a quarter of a day, every day for 40 days in a row, three times. And all those times I was doing Hit Bodedut only for the redemption, only for the general redemption of the whole wide world. Did it happen yet? No. Do you have a better advice, something else? Should I, should I go and do it again, maybe? Tell me. I want to go to sleep already, like I'm dead tired. I need to, to eat something and go to sleep, but I won't. I'm going to drive from Monsi to five towns and we're going to hear that in the restaurant we cannot give the class and we're going to come to Lee's place and we're going to give this class here and we're going to continue and we're going to drive like crazy and go and look for another shoe store tomorrow, Bezat Hashem. <laughs> it's not in our hands. It's not in our hands. So if it's not in our hands, we're not supposed to blame ourselves and chase ourselves on what we are not able to achieve. Because it's not in our power. It's like you're going to blame yourself that you are not taller than you are, that you're not able to fly. If you're not. It's not in your power. So there's no reason to blame yourself. But why are we blaming ourselves? Because that's the trick. Because that is the power of the evil inclination. He wants you to forget your skills, your power, that you're going to be destroyed, that your low self-esteem will control your mind. 
that you will not appreciate yourself, that you will lose your motivation to work and to achieve great things, and that you're all day long going to go like a poor, homeless, broken to pieces, hating yourself and blaming yourself, and by that despair that will control your mind, you're not going to do anything with your, li with your life. That's the evil inclinations plan. That's exactly what that he's doing. For that he's making our life crazy. That we're gonna have to run from this side to the other. To talk to people. To do these so many errands. So many things to do. All day long you're busy and worried and thoughts. And attacking yourself. And criticizing yourself. And don't know what to do. And what's the answers. And alright I wanna do. And everything that you do you can't find comfort in it. You can't find happiness in it. Why? Because we're so close to the redemption. Because the darkest hour is the hour before of dawn. Because that it's about to change. Because that we're about to shift to a higher dimension, to a different stage in our life. All of our generation. And for that we came to that place of craziness that we lost our minds. That even if you sit and learn Torah, what can be bad in that? And you can't find no comfort and no happiness in that. And you try to pray and it doesn't, it doesn't heal you and it doesn't satisfy you. And you give charity and you help people and you do good and you're supportive and you're nice and you're kind and you can't find happiness and satisfaction in that. No matter what you do, you go nuts, you go crazy. Why is it happening again? Because the Yetzirah, the evil inclination, found the trick for us to forget who we really are, for us to forget our real identity, for us to forget that we came down from a holy source, that our souls are heavenly, that every single one of us is holding a portion of heaven from above, Chelek Eloka, a godly portion inside of you, that's your soul. Elokai, we're saying, my God, Neshama Shenatata be the soul that you put inside of me. You put! I didn't do anything. I'm just experiencing it. What did you gave me, the soul that you put inside of me, it's pure. Terorai, it's pure. With no connection to me. Me, I'm stupid. I'm crazy. I'm a lunatic. I don't know anything. But my soul is precious. I'm crazy, I lost my mind, I saw all Star Wars, I saw all the Avengers, me, I don't, I saw all, all, all James Bond series, I, I saw thousands of movies, I, I, I've been freaked out completely, me, like, I'm lousy, but my soul is pure. I have my crazy war in my mind. I have a battle. My body is physical, is desiring, full of passions, lust and desires, fears and anxieties, angers. I'm furious. I'm losing my mind. But my soul is thirsty. My soul desiring Hashem. 24-7 my soul is screaming, I want to go up. I love Hashem. I love Am Yisrael. I love the Torah. I want to do good. I want to be kind. My soul is pure. And I can hear those voices from within. And there's a battle between the forces of darkness and forces of light. You see food. You see houses. You see backyards. You see cars. You see things with your eyes. And those things are blinding your flesh. Blinding your mind. Attacking your, your head. Your thoughts. Your feelings. Your heart is, is, is a victim to all the sights that you see all day long. But your soul is screaming from within with a flaming passion to the Creator. And if you're going to follow this voice, if you're going to bring your awareness, your mind to listen to your inside, to the heavenly voice of the Creator that is talking to you all the time, that is calling you from within 24-7, Every moment of your life is hinting you exactly what you should do to become a better person, to benefit your actions, to be a nicer, more kind, more sensitive. You have a voice of truth that you can define, that you can recognize. Inside yourself there is a voice. And that voice is the voice of good, is a heavenly voice. And when you overpower your mind, and forcing it to listen to the voice of the Creator that is calling you from within, you can become that holy angel. 
and you can control all your actions and you can become a man of God like Hanoch. And then the Creator can lead you and take you to those places that you will make wonders in the world, that you will bring miracles to the world, that your prayers will be answered and that wonders will take place in your life and that you will change the lives of others. But to blame ourselves for the darkness that is surrounding us, for the temptations that are surrounding us, that's a 100% mistake. Because the light is shining from within. And on that we need to base our relationship with the Creator. On the inner illumination, on the inner connection, on the inner voice that is waking up us and calling us from within to become better people and to believe in the true potential of our lives. And that's our mission, to become those souls that we are, to listen to that inner voice and to become loyal to that voice and to walk with it all the way and not to back off and not to surrender to the negativity, to the sad thoughts, to the th thoughts of despair, to the anger, to the frustration, to all the patterns that are trying to control our lives. We need to live our lives in the present time. In every situation, in every intersection, you need to ask yourself, how in that moment of my life I'm going to be a better person? How am I going to use more faith right now? How am I going to trust the Creator more right now? How am I going to use the tools that I have, that I possess, that I own? How am I going to be nicer? How am I going to be more sensitive? What else can I do for you? What else can I do for someone else? What else can I do for myself? If in every moment of our lives we're just going to think, we're going to breathe, we're going to use the tools that are already treasured and planted inside of our mind, inside of our hearts, we'll be much better and much more successful. And it depends only in the power of our own will that we need to want it. We need to desire to be better people. We need to take that decision on ourselves. I want to improve. I want not to let the power of darkness to control me, to overpower me, to break my self-esteem. I want to believe in myself. I want to do good. And I want to conquer the world. I want to succeed. I want to help other people. And to go with that positive energy and to make changes in the world. I bless you all from the bottom of my heart to succeed and to find true happiness, to believe in yourselves, and by that to see the light that is shining from within. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.